Hello there everyone guys we are in deep trouble so our profit is down to $74,000 on our long trade and if we're gonna take a look at the technicals right here then we're gonna actually really quickly see that we are not breaking above this wedge just yet even though it was what we really were hoping for but for now it's really not that big of a reason to worry just yet because what our main support right now is coming in at 27,300 so until then everything is fine but if we do break down below then it's gonna open the target for like $25,000 which actually would kind of make sense after this parabolic run and correction then maybe retest here and then the potential um, next upside move but in this video guys this is all great but I wanted to talk to you about something that so many people misunderstand and so many people scream at me in the comments like oh Thomas the dollar is the future Bitcoin is garbage number one I don't understand what these people even are doing here who are naysayers and non-understanders of the global financial financial system and the revolution that Bitcoin is bringing but nonetheless this video is for those who don't understand what is happening and what kind of deep shit we're actually in right now so without any further ado let's just jump straight into this and let's begin with something positive and it just came out just now literally just now MicroStrategy has just acquired another 1000 bitcoin for 30 million dollars at an average price of about twenty-eight thousand dollars per bitcoin right now they're holding hundred and forty thousand bitcoin worth right now like four billion and uh average entry price is twenty nine thousand dollars so you can thirty thousand dollars so you can actually have a better entry price potentially now than MicroStrategy, which is just an incredible generational wealth creation opportunity in my opinion but nonetheless let's just move on to the real deal as to what is happening right now in the world and a lot of people don't they're blind they don't understand they don't follow the news they don't follow the narrative and that's why i'm here mr spot on subscribe hit that notification bell call me mr spot on down in the comments and hit that like button show to show appreciation for my daily content and guys remember if you want to see my personal trades and the trades of my team then go down into the description of this video and join my free discord channel because this is where I actually post all of my trades and the trades of my team and the trade results of our team members and the, just in general of our discord are absolutely ridiculous I mean look at this 40 percent uh 30 percent 60 percent 17 percent 30 like whatever I mean I can be going through this forever and the VIP trades we're posting all of this like all our entries exits targets etc so this is really the community you really want to be a part of so if you're not part of it then go join us right now for absolutely free now I'm getting back to the topic of this video and now we got all the good stuff out of the way let's jump into this right here so guys this is actually the delinquency rate on credit card loans and the banks uh like basically the current you know people defaulting on their credit cards so this just shows the state of the economy and what is usually happening and historically we've seen before the dot-com bubble these kinds of loans and credit cards were actually piling up and then you know we had this mega crash then 2008 look the same thing the credit card loans were piling up and then a big recession came and look what we are seeing right now this was pre-covid right here and this is what is happening right now again because people don't have any money left they are just broke everybody's a brokey these days so this is very bad for the economy in general now the next thing is this thing right here which is the borrowing rate of the commercial banks and the banking contagion actually keeps on spreading the everybody right now in this the finance industry is actually coming out and screaming that guys the financial crisis of the banking sector is not over yet and it is very far from over so this has has made US banks go on a borrowing spree right now they borrowed half to a trillion dollars in just one week guys one week that's why we saw this increase in the Fed's balance sheet so anyway imagine as to what is happening right now and if uh, to add insult to injury look at the deposits of all commercial banks all US banks are still under huge stress and deposits continue to flee at an unprecedented as it says at an unprecedented rate rapid decline so people are taking their money out of um fiat and they're taking their i mean out of the banks which is absolutely crazy and a lot of the money is actually flowing into the cryptocurrency into bitcoin because this is the safe haven asset this is the only solution in this current uh, environment and a lot of people have been screaming at me saying to thomas i mean even if the dollar will be going under it cannot happen very fast etc blah 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 so this is actually partially true so let me actually because nobody's talking about this so guys watch this video till the end this stuff is 
explaining the narrative and creates this generational wealth building opportunity when you understand which assets are going to perform the best. So let's take a look. This is from Econometrics. This is a very important piece on the topic of the debt level, whether it's a systemic risk for the United States. And right now, let's understand this. It's going to be a very deep dive. And then we're going to move to Glasnost and talk, talk about some on-chain metrics. So guys, watch this video till the end. Very boring stuff, but very important indeed. So the United States government needs money, right, to operate. I need it needs a lot of it. There is money for national defense, healthcare, education, for infrastructure project, for uh, projects, for social security, and so on. And um, believe it or not, but US needs more money every year than it can actually generate with taxes, custom duties, and the various um, fees they extract from the economy. I mean, this is a non-profitable business. So if a business older would have this kind of a model, it would go absolutely bankrupt. So just to explain this in simple layman terms. So, uh, and then to cover the difference, the federal government raises the debt by issuing various treasury securities, notes, and bonds to the investors. And this is what this debt is all about. So everybody's coming, buying this U.S. debt, and then getting an interest paid um, uh, on top of it later on. And the U.S., this is how they're sustaining their operation, which just makes no sense. Guys, it's counterintuitive. And once again, if there were to be a regular business of me or you, we would have gone bankrupt a long time ago. And then the government would be after us because we had some taxes due, whatever, and then would put us in jail or something. But the government is doing the same thing just worse but it's all great it's all fine so nonetheless right now the total outstanding federal debt is more than 31 trillion dollars 31.4 31.5 and the thing is that for reference the entire u.s stock market is worth 40 trillion so all the stocks out there in the united states are worth a little bit more than the external debt of the united states this is crazy but now you might think that this is all well and good as long as the u.s gets more growth out of raising more debt um so the idea here is very simple so when they increase debt we get they get so much money it all goes into the economy of the united states and therefore gdp also growth so i mean it's a stimulation for the economy but the thing is and here is the biggest problem guys so watch this i mean but the problem is that not with it's not what it's what's happening because normally what you would expect is that the us raises the debt the federal government invests this cash into the economy and the economic growth is boosted as a result however <laughs> that's why we're seeing you know potential de-dollarizing and everything that you know the dollar is coming close to the um, mark of 100 the year of being the reserve currency and usually any reserve currency global reserve currency hasn't survived more than 100 years because of all the same reasons of all the same shit right here we're looking at it so since 1980s both the u.s debt and its gdp have grown together so again when the debt grows they take this money u.s uh, federal government invests this cash into economy so the gdp and the economy is supposed to grow but the problem is that the debt has grown faster than GDP. And this chart, this is the debt to GDP ratio. Look, it's just skyrocketing. So what this means is that as the time goes, the US gets less bang for its bucks when it creates more debt. Diminishing returns are at play. So this is the recipe for default and i mean it's just it's just numbers it's it, you numbers don't lie so that can lead to a default on your debt when you can no longer cover the interest expenses now then uh, actually big question becomes as to you know how fast could this happen how fast could dollar fall to zero whatever you know all these black swan event type of scenarios now the us is somehow less affected and this is also a very important point we're going to discuss everything in just a second so the us is somehow less affected by this dynamic actually right now because its privileged status status um, has this privileged status as the reserve currency of the world and again the petrodollar all the you know deals being done globally with the dollar so they have a lot of power so these effects of what we're discussing right here are actually minimized because of it but we've already seen what the BRIC nations are doing France also Brazil and China Russia etc they're coming together and potentially the operation Sandman is going to be taking this off the table and and if this is going to happen, then all these effects right here are going to only accelerate. So keeping this in mind, and guys, nobody's talking about this. So like, subscribe, and uh, call me Mr. Spot on that in the comments, because this information is 
just unbelievably important. So, however, the real question is, and we're getting to the question I just discussed, um, can the U.S. afford to make those interest payments for now? And for, the, um, uh, and for now, the answer is definitely yes, it can, and by a pretty big margin. So let's discuss this. As of quarter, fourth quarter of 2022, the cost of servicing the debt is about 16% of the revenue for the federal government. So it's only 16%. However, if we look at this, so uh, blue is federal receipts and red is interest payments. But it is, well, I mean, you cannot say it's catching up. But considering what is happening right now with potentially with de-dollarization, this could start catching up much, much faster, guys. So, uh, and as it says right here, don't get me wrong, this isn't going in the right direction. And certainly, again, this is what I just meant. It's not going in the right direction. But the US is still pretty far from a scenario of a default, etc. So, considering this, what we have to conclude that um, we aren't like, you know, three months away from the US defaulting on its debt. That's for sure. So, those of you who were screaming in the comments that this is all unrealistic, that Bellagio is targeted $1 million by summer is unrealistic because of all these things, because this doesn't, it simply doesn't happen this fast. However, guys, here is what we need to take away from this. Number one, it still is accelerating to the downside in terms of how good the eco economy really is. It's just a broken system that is accelerating off of a cliff right now. Certainly, it won't jump off of a cliff in the next three months, but in the next three to, for example, five to ten years, for sure. I mean, this stuff just cannot keep happening. And right now, what most important before we move to on-chain data, which you have to understand, what we have to understand here is that uh, by rephrasing this analysis, we can say that long Bitcoin is still a pretty good place to be uh, in provided that you can tolerate some volatility over the next 12 months. And why? Number one, we're going to take a look at some on-chain data, which explains exactly why. And number two is that if uh, we are all wrong and we're really moving towards a sovereign debt crisis, you know, that the, the dollarization and everything we've just mentioned, I've just mentioned in this video, then Bitcoin is an alternative store of value would likely benefit. So we would, it would be good for us to be in Bitcoin. However, if the US debt continues continues to expand and that the Federal Reserve has to cut rates to keep interest payments under control. This is also good for Bitcoin, seen as a risk asset, since that is, um, you know, that will ease financial conditions, you know, quantitative easing, the stimulation of the economy, everything is going to the upside. And a banking crisis or a debt crisis is also likely to help with Bitcoin is a store of value narrative, which we've just seen right here that the actual deposits in all commercial banks is just plummeting like crazy right now, which is could actually uh, spark more bank runs in the near future. So so what I'm trying to say in this video, guys, understanding everything, like everything is lining up for Bitcoin right now. And if we're going to take a look at some on-chain metrics, like for example, this right here, which is the uh, HODL ratio and maximum conviction of HODLers usually was right at the bottom, right here in 2015, also right here at the bottom of 2019, I believe. And also just now we've seen this huge peak in maximum HODLer conviction uh, when the FTX saga has actually happened. So this this is actually very bullish and it expl explains the market really well. And also, if we're going to take a look at the MVRV deviation bands, then every time, and again, if you want to know what MVRV is, you can just Google it or go to Glassnode and check those out. It's a very long story, so I'm going to spend your time here on this. Every time when we were actually breaking above the green support, this was uh, the beginning or, you know, the recovery, at least the beginning of the recovery rally from the absolute bottom of the market of the cycle. So, and this is what exactly what we are seeing currently. So, this is also quite bullish. Now, one more thing that we're actually seeing right now, we saw some FTX accumulation, really heavy accumulation. So, everybody was accumulating like crazy. And also recently we saw a recovery distribution, uh, but it's actually turning currently into a bigger accumulation. So potentially this up move still has some legs, even though, as I said, we can potentially see it uh, correct down maybe to 25K and see if we can actually retest this area and grab some liquidity. And then, I mean, in the worst case scenario, 23K. And then certainly I'm going to keep my long trade until at least 25K because my entry price is 24, but I certainly would not keep it and risk it until 23. So it would be only normal for us to come down retest it. But overall, considering this, everything we've just discussed in this video and at which shit show we are actually staring down at right now, all I'm doing is accumulating Bitcoin. And there is just no way around this because, guys, the dollar is just going to be done. Certainly not in the next three months, but... Give it a few years and you will see this unfold. And you're going to be telling me, Thomas, thank you very much for warning me back in the day. Check out this quick tutorial as to how to trade Bitcoin with proper risk and money management so you actually trade like a professional. And as always, stay smart, stay rich, peace and love. Thomas Kralo, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.